This is the Tower Battles X TDX collab event. And because I like suffering, I'll be trying to beat the Nightmare Void solo with no guide or prior knowledge of the game mode. And to make things even spicier, every time I fail an attempt, I'll have to open a skin crate. Will I be able to defeat the Nightmare Void before I roll a legendary skin? Starting out was rough. With no information on what enemies I would even be facing, I was essentially going into this challenge blind. This was especially apparent in my tower loadout, where the Slammer, Golden Ranger, and Armored Factory combo that had worked exceptionally well in the regular game modes struggled to beat 13 waves on a simple map. Wow. Okay, I need to rethink my strategy. Clearly, my tower loadout was just not up to the task. Thus, I began the testing phase to find the ideal early game tower. First up was the artillery. Since I was struggling with the sheer volume of zombies being spammed, the artillery's combination of long range and large splash was perfect for quickly wiping out hordes of enemies. My first attempt with artillery went okay. Throughout the game, I struggled on the mystery spam. What the hell? These mysteries are so OP. But I managed to make it to wave 15 before some hidden slept through my defense. This is so not fair. How fast I really Ah. On my second attempt, however, I had the bright idea of trying to target two artillery simultaneously, which got me a little further, but ended exactly how you'd expect. I missed! I whiffed! No, I'm whiffing! I'm whiffing! No! No! I'm trolling. I'm actually trolling. I'm trolling! No! No, I'm trolling! Yet, yeah, in my infinite wisdom, I decided to try it again on Western instead of Borderlands, which I thought would be easier, but... This is impossible. Call it a skill issue, but I gave up on trying to use artillery, which leads us to the next tower I tried, Toxinator. After a pretty devastating nerf in March, the Toxinator became a pretty niche tower primarily used to debuff enemies like the Assailant and Major Bosses, but I was more interested in the top path upgrades. You see, the Toxinator works by shooting a cloud of gas that applies poison damage to any enemy that walks through it. This essentially increases the effective range of the Toxinator far beyond its attack range, as many enemies dies the poison damage later down the map. Combined with its excellent splash damage, the Toxinator was perfect for dealing with the hordes of enemies without being micro-intensive like the artillery. After several placement adjustments, No! No, what?! There's no way! I was surprised to see that it performed even worse than the artillery. There were so many enemies that the clouds hit their maximum targets almost instantaneously, leaving some zombies hardly damaged at all. It was made pretty apparent to me why no one uses the top path toxinator anymore, so I started to search for another tower. This was when I stumbled upon the barracks, the first spawner tower added to the game. Being a spawner tower, the barracks came with some unique advantages compared to a traditional tower. First off, it basically has full map range, as the units spawn at the map's exit and move to the entrance. This allows the barracks to save you some money from purchasing unnecessary towers to catch leaks. Secondly, like other spawner towers, the barracks becomes more efficient on longer maps. This is due to the unit respawn time being less than the map traversal time, increasing the reliability of the spawner. Finally, all spawner towers benefit from maps with overlaps as this gives the spawn units some more opportunity to attack. These combined advantages, and also this. Wait, I got a barracks skin. That's a sign. Made the barracks a very promising option for my early game issues. However, as these advantages were very map dependent, I now had to make a difficult decision of selecting a map. The Tower Battles event can only be played on five maps. Western, Military Base, Pond, Grasslands, and Borderlands. And while I could quickly rule out Grasslands and Pond, as those maps were particularly difficult, the remaining three maps each had their own unique advantages. Since I figured the endgame would not be very map dependent, I wanted to base my decision mostly on how much it would benefit the early game tower of my choice, the Barracks. While Western was a pretty solid map, it's surprisingly shorter than Borderlands, despite being rated as simple. This left only two maps, Borderlands and Military Base. While Borderlands was the more ideal map for the barracks, it unfortunately lacked water. This prevented me from using Warship, 
a tower I really wanted to bring because of its powerful endgame capabilities. That made my map of choice the military base. But hold on a second. Western is longer than military base, and they both have water. Shouldn't that make Western a more ideal map for this challenge? While that may be true, military base has this cool feature where you get more tokens. Not about sending a message. It's about money. With all that out of the way, it was time to begin the grind. My first two attempts with Barracks, lots of lava spam on wave 11, leading to a defeat on wave 13. These enemies were stupidly tanky because in addition to having 210 shield, you also had to kill them twice. This gives them almost a thousand effective HP, which completely curb stops my level 4 scouts, forcing them to make a last stand near the exit, where the relentless waves of necromancer spawns overwhelmed them. I tried to counteract this by upgrading my slammers at wave 11 to deal some extra damage to the lavas, but... That's so obnoxious! Jesus! That's when I realized, this is TDX, you have two upgrade paths. With the new M202 trooper on my side, I was finally able to clear out the pesky lavas and make it to wave 14. Wait, only wave 14? Yeah, I got some pretty bullshit sorry RNG. Nah, I just had terrible RNG bro, what were those mysteries? But the next attempt is where the barracks really began to show its true potential. The wave 15 boss 2? Completely shredded! The hidden boss on the next wave? My M202 trooper literally walked over him. The wall of barracks units was wiping every single wave. Until wave 20, where 5 hidden bosses ran straight through my barracks units. Oh god, oh god! These hidden bosses are brutal! But this was good progress, and with only a 2% chance of getting a legendary skin, I felt confident in beating this challenge. I continued making small changes each run with varying levels of success. Damn. Why are you so fast? <laughs> However, I almost always oh, lost oh, the wave 20. Died. No way! What? But what made this wave so difficult in particular? The problem was not just the 5 hidden bosses in wave 20, but also the 4 boss 2s in the previous wave. Even without skipping the wave, my defense struggled to overcome the boss 2's 75% bullet resistance, leading to an unfortunate sequence of events, where the boss 2's from the previous wave tanked all the damage from my barracks, rolling out a red carpet for the 5 hidden bosses to trample my now heavily weakened barracks units. I attempted to counteract this by bringing in some operators to target the hidden bosses directly. However, they still couldn't deal enough damage. No, I... Even with the help of an EDJ, uh. Well, there is still one other tower we can try. Meet the Ghost. Not only is she more cost effective than the Operator, oh, but her level 4 top path grants the C7 hey, drone ability it? that can reveal all stealth enemies. She wasn't released when you recorded. Oh. But I wasn't lying when I said there is still one other tower we can try, because now I feel it is appropriate to bring in the most overpowered tower ever added to TDX. Uh. Using the farm, I was able to beat my wave record on the first attempt, making it all the way to wave 26, where I lost to another hidden boss rush. Oh god. Although it was only 6 waves higher than my previous record, the farm had already demonstrated its effectiveness even without proper usage, cause I was kinda just placing them down whenever I felt like it. Armed with the literal embodiment of Roblox capitalism, my ultimate triumph over the Nightmare Void felt closer than ever. But all this wishful thinking came crashing down when I lost to Wave 14 to the f***ing mysterious 
That was just bad RNG. That was literally just bad RNG. Thankfully, my next attempt went a lot better. I managed to make it to the first major enemy on wave 27, the Necromancer boss. With a whopping 25,000 HP and a summon ability that can spawn some pretty powerful enemies, including the boss board, which is more combined HP than the Necromancer boss itself. Wait, how does that even make any sense? All you need to know is that this guy is no joke. Unless you have Slammers, which does make him a joke. With the Slammers top path ability carrying me, I reached wave 32, where a deadly combo of boss 3s and multiplier 3s overpowered my defense. What? What are you doing? How did I lose? I tried to utilize a 2-3 warship on my next attempt. However, the varying zombie speeds caused by a combination of clone boss 3s and slammer stuns resulted in my warship missing several attacks, leading to another crushing defeat. Dude, this wave is impossible, what? It's probably a good idea to create some sort of plan for the endgame now, as trying to trial and error my way through wave 32 like he did for wave 20 would burn through many attempts, giving me more chances to lose the challenge. My primary concern were rush waves like 26, 29, and now 32, as they were very lethal and had already ended many of my runs. But these waves all shared one recipe, take a fast enemy and multiply them. So how do you counter them? Will you start spamming top path slammers? I plan to place 10 top path slammers at the front of the map to create a kill zone, allowing my main source of damage to deal with the leftover enemies. However, choosing my main endgame damage would be a tedious task. Every tower has pros and cons. How was I supposed to find a tower with the endurance, damage output, and resistance bypass to face this game mode? Oh wait! Someone already did the research for me. Let's see what yes, tower I should sir. use. XWM turret! Well, that's perfect, because I've already been using her. But surely he has something to say about the slammer, which also plays a crucial role in my plan. Slammer. Slammer, baby girl. You the one for me for real. Yep, I am 100% confident in the slammer's capabilities now. With a complete plan for the entire game mode, I was on track to defeat the Nightmare Void in no time. But that's when I faced the worst enemy yet. No, I messed up here. No way. No way we lose to these guys, bro. There's no shot. We lose to the stupid boss force. Come on. No, 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 no. We're not gonna die to stocks, bro. What? What did I? Are you? What? What's going on here? Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's so. Okay, so apparently. Level 5 Slammer is worse at stalling than level 4 Slammer. Like, what type what what of bullshit is that? The main problem with my plan was that it wasn't straightforward. Combine that with relying only on my memory because I didn't document anything, I was bound to make mistakes like buying the wrong upgrade or placing a tower in the wrong spot. This made each defeat extraordinarily frustrating, which led to more mistakes on the next attempt. Additionally, every loss had the chance to completely end the challenge, adding even more frustration. This gameplay loop got so bad that... Wait, are we dying to this? What the fuck? With a refreshed mind, it was finally time to beat this godforsaken game mode once and for all. If I ever find one of these lying around again, I swear to fucking god! I will stop being so polite. Get the fuck out of my sight before I demolish you. During this next attempt, I was finally able to build my slammer kill zone. Now let's see how it performs. The slammer kill zone strategy was more effective than I could ever imagine. Pairing this with several bottom path warships and plenty of XWM turrets, I reached the final wave with no problem. The wave started by spamming boss 3s and 4s, with some necromancer bosses sprinkled in. This was still no match for my slammers, as these enemies didn't even make it past the first bend of the map. But the next enemy, the mystery boss, is another story. Upon defeat, the mystery boss can spawn a random major boss, like the Eradicator, Revived Plague Doctor, and Eradicator Mark II. Although at this point in the game, your defenses should have no issue dealing with these, unless... Fortunately, that didn't happen to me, and my defense made short work of the two Eradicator Mark IIs. Then, finally, after over 7 hours of brutal trial and error, the Nightmare Void showed his face. Following an ear-piercing scream that stunned all my towers, 
he immediately sunk two of my warships with some telekinesis bullshit. Why are my warships flying? Oh my god. And then threw an entire meteor shower at my towers. You would think that the slammer's ability to stun every single boss in the game would be useful here. But this nightmare bullet is just straight up immune to any form of stun or slowdown. Okay, he does not get slowed down. After multiple devastating attacks, such as summoning a massive horde of enemies and even turning your own towers against each other. No, 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 no. Why are you shooting? Why are you shooting yourself? Why, why are you shooting yourself? It was clear that this was not going very well. Oh my. Oh, stop shooting. Stop. No, 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 no. What? Not fair. I thought shooting yourself but it could get much worse as there's still a chance i roll a legendary skin from the crate which would end the challenge prematurely as much as i wanted to jump into a new game and try again immediately my last crate roll reminded me that i was starting to push my luck a bit the next game would be my 30 second attempt and by using some math here you can see that my odds of winning the challenge are starting to dwindle, with additional losses only decreasing my chances further. In order to guarantee a victory to the silly little challenge I trapped myself in, I had to beat the Nightmare Void on my next attempt. But how? My last try barely made a dent in his health, and if I were to brute force my way to a triumph, I would likely roll a legendary skin in a future attempt. Perhaps his challenge had already been lost. but I wasn't ready to give up yet. There was still a tower that could salvage this challenge. Something powerful. Something that could really pack a punch. You can probably guess which tower I'm talking about now. Being one of the most expensive towers ever added, and having some of the highest DPS in the game, introducing the warship. My ace up the sleeve. Golden Juggernaut. Let me explain. While the Warship is one of the best endgame towers, it absolutely sucks against the Nightmare Void. You see, if more than one Warship is placed down, the Nightmare Void will use an attack that levitates and instantly destroys two random Warships. But hold on! The attack lasts around 6 seconds, and during that time, the Nightmare Void can't move, attack, or convert your towers. It's basically free damage. And the best part? He uses this attack on level 0 Warships. So all this can be triggered with a measly $20,000. That's like pocket change during endgame. Although this technique should work in theory, I still wasn't confident in defeating the Nightmare Void on the next attempt. Getting to wave 40 was a challenge on its own, and despite this technique having massive potential, could it really take me from barely scratching the Nightmare Void's health to taking him down completely? Well, there's only one way to find out. Through me just being a super pro gamer or a stroke of dumb luck, I was able to reach wave 40 again on my next attempt, giving me the opportunity to end this right here, right now. Would this technique be enough? Would I suddenly disconnect and throw my computer out a window? I think I'm just gonna let it play out.
stun again. He's literally spamming worship attacks. This is so OP. Look, we win, we win, we win! Holy sh we win! Oh my yes! Yes! Easy! Dude, worship is so OP! He just spams it and he can't move! Easy! Easy, we win! We win! Holy crap, we win! Oh my god, we won! The worship stall, it's so broken! We won! So, what did I learn from all of this? Just follow a guide.